All right, at this point, I've managed to solder the wires back onto the board, onto the plug, folded the boards back to where they're supposed to go, slid the boards back up inside, and re-soldered the connections here for the alternator for the speed controller. Now I made a mistake on this thing, obviously, and that is I'm used to soldering my components close to the board and these bad boys, these two transistors, should have soldered away from the board a pretty good distance so they could fold over and fold flat. Because I soldered them close to the board, I'm having trouble flattening them, pulling them out and make them fold flat so that when I put this board against this cap on it, it doesn't want to seal all the way down flat. So I got to figure that out. Anyway, I do that, should be able to bolt it back together again and get her up in there and test her out. Getting close, but the little screw up may cost. Well, there she is, all back installed, tied up underneath. Yeah. And on the other side, I went in and pulled up, wire tied everything back together again. So at this point, we should be ready for a road. In order to gain a little extra room, I disconnected these two here, pulled this straight off this direction, off the firewall, lowered it down into that hole right down there to where I could then pull all the wires loose. I cut the wire ties down there so I could pull it loose. And then once I got it all back, I pulled it back together again, make sure everything's plugged back in. The uh, I did pull that little wire loose, but I put it back. So we should be ready to go back. Well, there she sits, off the jack stands, and ready to run. Took her out for a test drive, and everything seems to go good. Just first, second, third, just like she's supposed to. Um, this is Ben 80, 4805, 1981, gray interior, automatic transmission, in really great shape. Car's only got 13,000 miles on her. So, and she's now back on the road, ready for prime time. Thank y'all for enjoying the video. Hopefully, it gave you some insight and maybe helped you in doing your own transmission governor controller repair. I will tell you that um, lesson learned, um, I probably would have gone ahead and pulled out the GC all the way out of the car. The Having it in under the car and doing the soldering and putting everything back underneath the car was a problem. Um, made it more difficult. By the time I loosened everything up in order to get to it, I could have just pulled the dang thing. So I really think that it probably be best just to go ahead and pull it. Um, the other thing is that when you if you replace the transistors, and I highly suggest you do, um, you need to go back with and make sure when you put them back in that you have the legs long enough that they will fold down and around and go flat over the edge of the boards because that's how they fit inside the little box top. I was able to pull mine the other way and get them flat enough to where they would clear the um, clear the lid, but it's really better if you'd gone ahead and, and if I'd have pulled it, I probably would have gone ahead and pulled, seen the problem and pulled it, re-soldered the things to fix it. So, lessons learned. Pull the GC. Don't try to do it like I did it. That was too much trouble. Um, number two, when you solder the transistors in, go with the um, with the, go ahead and solder it way up on the leg so you can fold the legs over. Also, um, I didn't have the tip 42 C's, but there was an NTE equivalent. Um, I think it's NTE 33. I'll have to look and see. I will validate what the actual number is and then post it as a comment on the um, on the video so that you guys can, if anybody wants to do it. But the um, so the when I went back, I went with NTE transistors and two watt resistors 
to help dissipate some of the seed. Well, there she is. Lots of fun. Thank you. I hope, hope